I'll do, please. A puppet judge, eager to condemn the audience for crimes against the state and deliver them into the arms of an oppressive prison system. You think this is amusing? This immersive experience is how one of the founding members of Pussy Riot interprets her own story. The punk rock art group were propelled onto the global stage in 2012 after protesting against Vladimir Putin in an orthodox cathedral in Moscow. Their performance led to Nadia Tolokonikova's arrest and two-year imprisonment for hooliganism and religious hatred. As political artists, we always thought, how can we uh, involve members of audience more? Because I, when I'm performing on the stage, that's fun too, but I, I feel like I want to touch the audience, I want to make them live through certain moments of my life. The actors are aggressive. Do not speak, it is forbidden. The setting intimidating. And as a former prisoner, I can vouch for the production's attention to detail. You probably don't know this about me, but I was actually in Russian prison at the same time that you were. A pirate? Yeah, I was a pirate. Okay. She's right, I was a pirate, sort of. In 2013, I was hired by Greenpeace to film a protest and was arrested along with their activists by Russian authorities in the Arctic Ocean. These are the pictures I captured as Russian special forces stormed the ship and arrested all 30 people on board at gunpoint. Once on shore, I was charged along with the activists with piracy and faced a 15-year prison sentence. As the courts decided our fate, we were held in a dilapidated detention centre. Thankfully, I only spent two months behind bars. Nadia Tolokonikova spent two years. I wanted to know why she's still provoking the Russian government who imprisoned her and what memories she carries with her having been in those brutal conditions for so long. When you are in prison, the day lasts forever. You know, here you, you have all, 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 all these friends and family and uh, entertainment, uh, cell phones, and, and so time runs so differently. So the things that really struck me were the, the small details, things like the, the colours of the wall in the police office was exactly <laughs> and, spot on. It was like the thing that took me right back to my experience. Whenever I left my cell, they would always handcuff me and make me look at the floor, which you're constantly told mm -hmm. in the experience. How, do you, how did you fight against those mini oppressions, those microaggressions like that? That's a big question. Even when I go through this experience here, I, I think constantly about it. And um, I'm sure that we'll have a lot of people here who are visitors who will say no. Eyes down. That's a great sign when people are not um, agreeing to be obedient. And I did have this problem uh, in, in another theater, immersive theater productions. I refused to strip down and I said, like, don't scream at me. Like, just don't scream. Like, just, like get the f out of here. Don't scream at me. And I kind of I kind of deal with, like, after, after two years in prison, I know that you just have to stand for yourself. And if you will do everything that they want you to do, then you will end up being just a slave. Miss Tolokonikova co-wrote the play with theatre group Les Enfants Terribles. Mind your head. It aims to strip away the audience's identity, to dehumanise them. Just one moment you hear surrounded by your comrades and, and family and the next moment you're sitting in prison cell forced to watch Russian TV. So I have to listen to all this propaganda and you know sometimes they're saying things about us and so I like have to turn and explain. Yeah, but it's not true exactly. We're not paid by Hillary Clinton to destroy Russia. We're not witches. I don't have broomstick. We have to wear a prisoner's uniform and it's, it's slightly disgusting because it doesn't stretch, you feel yourself like a doll all the time and it, 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 it has to be perfect, it has to be buttoned and you have to be like this little doll who is super productive and obedient. That's a terrible feeling. Uh, but yeah, I did have friends uh, and, and they saved my life. Like Nadia, I had to endure hours of Russian state TV watched by my cellmates to relieve their boredom. But unlike Nadia, I didn't see this as an opportunity to protest. I made my little anti-TV riot in my prison, uh, so I, 
I spoke with all people in my cell and I, I convinced them that we don't have to, we don't have to listen to TV. Uh, when we should get rid of it. And uh, so one, um, I, I, I promised them that uh, we will have seminars on Bible and we would discuss Bibles literally in a circle. And so we, we just put this television in, in, in a garbage bag and, and throw it out. And then uh, the director of prison showed up and she said, no, you cannot throw out TV because Tolakonikov is here and what if human rights workers will come and we cannot say them that she has TV. And I'm like, no, I don't need it. I will complain about having TV. TV so, is a human right, I like it. <laughs> no, it could just, in, in, in a week we did it, we, we, we got rid of TV. Mm. And I, I feel like it's my biggest victory in, in my whole prison term. Pussy Riot and all of the 30 arrested during the Greenpeace protest were released on the same day under an amnesty given by Vladimir Putin. I, I thought they forgot about me after breakfast, but it's good to be outside and see the sky. This meant freedom for me and the relief of returning home. But for Tola Konnikova, it meant a swift return to activism. Just two months later, she was in Sochi to protest, where she was first beaten and then detained by local police. I recently had a daughter and it's changed my outlook on everything. Obviously you've been a mother a long time and yet you still put yourself in these really dangerous positions. I was just wondering how and why you keep taking such high risks when you know exactly what the stakes are. But you want to have different future for your daughter, for your kids, right? So I, I think politics today is super short-sighted. I'm just asking myself if we will not, as citizens of this world, if we will not take care of our planet, who will do it? Um, and I know, like we were discussing lots of political issues with my daughter, she's supporting me. Um, she wants to take part in a lot of things and um, I'm, I'm saying her that she's just too young for, for that right now. I mean, we, we are, I guess, strange family in a way, like super politically involved, but I, I believe that that's how we'll, we should fight for a better future, all together, one generation with another. In the four years since our release, many would argue that the world has changed in Vladimir Putin's favour. From the Ukraine to Syria, Brexit to Trump, Putin's influence seems obvious. But Nadia still feels her president is vulnerable. He's not that powerful, uh, because if you'll take a look at uh, Russian internal affairs, their government is extremely corrupted and they cannot handle their own like, things. Like, they, they cannot run hospitals, they cannot run schools, well, teachers are not getting paid. And like, how can you call yourself a powerful man if you cannot pay teachers who teach your kids? But he's incredibly popular still and you say that his power isn't that great, but there's no sign of him going anywhere. We cannot reach are lots of people, but we do what we can and you know, step by step where our audience is growing and, and we're covering uh, issues like how Russia really uh, is being run right now, how it's governed and it's not governed uh, in, in a good or effective way. For now, her focus is on prison reform. I believe that the prison system should focus on rehabilitation rather than on punishment and isolation. For me, it's uh, an act of um, activism more than act of art. The, of course, it, it's happening in, in the art gallery, but I, I want um, th those people who will go through that to start to think about prison system, to start think about all those people who are behind bars now.